This is Fulcrum with an urgent message. Thrawn knows about. Welcome to another special episode of The Kessel Run. Uh, I have with me again Heather from the Whovian perspective. Hey! And today we're getting together actually to talk about the latest Rebels episode, the season finale, Zero Hour. Heather, first thoughts? Wow. Um, <laughs> I have written down in big um, capital letters, damn, that was a great <laughs> episode. Um, I thought that Grand Admiral Thrawn was amazing in this episode. Um, yeah, and he gets you every time. It's like, you know, he's it's a trap, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what I liked a lot more about this, and I know that we've been kind of learning about Thrawn, but he's still been kind of that enigmatic, mysterious kind of person. But in this episode, for the first time, we saw fear um, yes. because his plan didn't go as according to plan. Uh, and I liked seeing him vulnerable. It, it gave another side to that character I thought was really interesting. Yeah, that's, that was really cool. And uh, I the whole time... I just kept thinking the pride before the fall. Absolutely. The whole, yeah. I, uh, the look on the look on his face and the way they um, portray him is just really cool. I think he always creeped me out. Like the first time they introduced him, the way he just talks so soft and just very stoic, like, it, it, he he shouldn't be a scary character, but he's. Well, I mean, he is. But I mean, it, right? It, it give me it gives me the creeps seeing him on screen. I I, I love it. The actor who yeah. plays his voice is amazing. Yeah, I agree. And I I really thought that it was fun. Uh, like whenever he's fighting Callus, and he's like, "Look, I know that you're a good fighter, but." you went to the Imperial Academy. Right. So how good could you really be? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love I the little it. digs. Cause like, and it was cool. Cause you finally got to see a personality out of Thrawn. Um, Cause it's almost like he's, uh, he's kind of on that edge of almost unhinged or he's getting there, uh, especially with how the episode ended with uh, him and Bindu and everything. It, uh, he's, he's grasping at straws. And so I wonder if he is the character that will, literally just lose it for vengeance and everything, which we've kind of seen in Darth Maul, um, or if he's going to keep being cold and calculated and if he's going to continue that, that, the trajectory that he's on right now. Right. I think he's going to learn and hopefully get, I don't know, I, I really see a future for him that if, if he can get over his pride and like, you know, <laughs> I mean, we're talking about Thrawn here, though. I mean, he's he's pretty prideful, though. Yeah, if he, <laughs> he can get very if he can get past that for like two seconds, he <laughs> might have actually been able to. But yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's pretty funny. <laughs> well, and, and I love that it wasn't necessarily him who freaked himself out. He didn't make a mistake. It was right. He put his trust in uh, one of the other commanders. people. Yeah. And then as soon as that happened, he got shaken because it was like, whoa, 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 this is not what I planned. And then he was right. like, I hope this still goes according to, and he loses control. I, I thought that was really cool for the character. Yeah, it was really cool. I really liked it. And uh, Santo. Woo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we say goodbye to, what was it, Captain or Command? I think it was Commander, Commander yes. Santo. Commander yes. Santo. Um, and um, I really thought his end was fitting mm -hmm. i knew it was gonna happen you know i um i knew a lot of people were gonna leave oh yeah for yeah well so part of me started to feel like it might be kanan I, and it may be walking dead fan in me but the way he was talking to ezra at the beginning of this of the show i was like oh hold on now that's not cool chill out let's not go say goodbyes or anything yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was like man because kanan would be huge which I, I don't see i don't see them doing that in the near future but i mean there's also the part of we really don't know kanan's fate and we really don't know what happens to him and so he's kind of he can be on the chopping block but I'm, I'm, I'm right. I had to remind myself that we were watching Rebels and not Walking Dead, so <laughs> right, <laughs> <laughs> it's not quite as brutal. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
So as far as uh, Bindu, that was an interesting twist, I thought. Um, that was. What did I, you think about that? My son, he's 11, and he was, oh, he should help, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, I mean, if you truly want to remain neutral in right. a situation, mm -hmm. you really can't help either side. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, I, and I thought it was cool how he came in as the Calvary but at right. the same sense, like I was waiting, I was like, okay, did he pick a side? And then he hits one of the ships with a lightning bolt. Yeah. Like, well, I think he's still ticked. <laughs> yeah, I think he's still I, I loved how bad. he was still the middle and everything. Um, but I'm curious about him, though, because I know he's a he's a force. Is it a force-wielding creature or is it a force creature? I, I'm trying to. I think it's, I don't know, actually. Because I know he is in tune with the light side and the dark is what he says. Right, um, he's so in the middle. He's, right, he's the one in the middle. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess we don't really know that much about him other than the few interactions that Kanan has had with him. Right. I uh, I consider him in my brain somehow, like, uh, elemental from D&D. Mm -hmm. uh, &D, okay. <laughs> where it's, I don't know, it's like a, probably a force, a creature made of the force. I have no yeah. idea, though. Well, I, I mean, that's just yeah. like a. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the closest description we'd have to that. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, and so as far as been doing everything, that, that, that prophecy at the end with uh, Thrawn, uh, I loved how much that actually really did shake him. Uh, it did. Yeah. It shook him to his core. It really. Because even at that point, Thrawn was like, I have you. And he had that confidence back again. And he was like, but do you? <laughs> but do you really? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just kind of like, no, I see your defeat. And I, I loved seeing that shake Thrawn so much that he's that much more surprised when Bindu just disappears. <laughs> he's gone. Yeah. I was surprised when Bindu was gone, too. Mm -hmm. I knew he would, you know, his body. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I kind of thought he would... Uh, Force die or whatever. Yeah, he, he put it. He uh, kind of pulled a Kenobi from uh, A New Hope. <laughs> right. <laughs> just, just disappear altogether. Nobody knows where he went. <laughs> right. <laughs> I did have a well, not really a complaint, but the the storm of how Bindu just out of nowhere just appeared. <laughs> like I, I don't know. I kind of felt like that was like even though it was warranted and it needed to happen. Obviously, because of how they were building up him and putting him in the story and the fact that the Empire was attacking his planet and all that kind of stuff. I felt right. like the story at that point kind of made him seem like he was the Calvary. Like all of a sudden, oh, yay, the Rebels are winning and everything. And it kind of played away to his man in the middle other than that he hit one of their ships, one or two of their ships. Right. But so it, yeah. we'll, so we'll kinda, have to see which side he's on. Right. I feel like I don't know if he's truly in the middle <laughs> is my right. thing. Yeah. Because if he was truly in the middle, they would have been hit equally before mm -hmm. then. Because what yeah. does Bindu have to gain from saving the rebels um, or even acting in that moment, period? Um, no. Other than that he wanted them gone. But, I mean, in the same sense, just let them fight and <laughs> they'll eventually be gone. Right. <laughs> I thought it was funny because he's so... He got so mad at a mm -hmm. word, coward. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you're like, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Someone of your stature and, you know, being so thrown off by a word that's... Kind of started feeling like playground insults for a second. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So I feel I felt you there. I, uh, I was like, hmm. So, yeah. <laughs> So I'll see. We'll see if he's really not in the middle. Because if he wasn't before, mm -hmm. he's probably not now at all. Right, and I'm kind of wondering if we will see him again, um, especially as how much as he's been in this season. Right. I, I think we should. I, I at least think we should see him again. Um, personally, I agree, and it, maybe it'll be a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like a really long while. Right. <laughs> but exactly. When we see him again, it'll be amazing. Well, well in the role that he played, um, and I, I, I mean, I could be wrong. This is just my opinion, but um, the role he played to Kanan kind of felt like Yoda to Luke 
It was a different kind of Yoda, <laughs> much different. Right, much <laughs> but, uh, different. Yeah, yes. much much angrier. <laughs> but but in the same sense, uh, he really taught Kanan a lot about the Force that he didn't know before, and taught him how to harness it with him losing his sight and everything. And so that would be interesting to kind of see if Bindu does play out later. Um, because, I mean, obviously you're not going to have the Force intervene too much, but then there's the part of how much does the Force actually take interest in the struggles that we see. Right, but is is the Force actually a sentient thing, or mm -hmm. is it actually just a weave, yeah. like a, a, a weave? Uh, yeah, there's all <laughs> kinds of right. stuff you could go into <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I, I I don't know. I I can, yeah. <laughs> so so moving on through the episode. Um. So we got to see a lot of uh, your personal favorite character, Ezra. <laughs> oh yeah, I I, I did get think? worried that he needs a new master if he's going to become a Jedi. Mm. But he is right. He needs Kanan as a person. Mm -hmm. You know, like. Um, maybe it may not be the greatest traditional Jedi, but maybe it's a new generation mm -hmm. and it's okay to be a little bit of a rambunctious little whippersnapper. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and with the original canon and everything, we see that that's what Luke's doing as well. And so right. he's not the only one doing his own thing. Um, I mean, right. not for lack of trying, but in the same sense. Um, so I, I think that'll be neat to see how the the Jedi way is translated through, it, as translated through Kanan to Ezra, and how he takes it beyond his teachings. I think that'll right. be really interesting to see. Yeah, and you know, see how adversity really can change something that you think is so set in stone and then everything is challenged and see how it morphs into something mm -hmm. really cool. Maybe we'll Absolutely. see. Yeah. I have hopes for him after this episode. He seemed to be able to hold his own a lot more than he does in prior episodes. Right. Uh, and so I, I, I saw a little bit of that growth that we talked about in our last episode. Just a little. Uh, yeah. Just a <laughs> Not much, but just a little. So we had uh, Ezra call for reinforcements. Now, I had a complaint about our uh, our Rebel Alliance. We'll, we'll use that term loosely, Alliance. Yeah. Um, Ezra goes for help. Mon Mothma turns him down, just like Rogue One. So this isn't the first time, but in Rogue One, right. oh, no, we can't do this. Oh, wait, they're already attacking? Let's join in. Like, yeah. wh what's up with that? Man, I, I see where she's coming from, but that's the whole part of the rebellion is heart, mm -hmm. you know, and, but I mean, she does have a lot of people that could be destroyed mm -hmm. based on her making the bad decision. That's true. I, I just feel like with the Alliance, it, it doesn't feel much like an Alliance. And I understand that it's young right now, but right. um, even in other iterations, it anytime someone has called for help, it takes them basically going on a suicide mission for anybody to go, hey, we should probably help. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll go. Okay. Yeah. I guess it's a good up. idea. I mean, yeah. <laughs> we might as well. <laughs> and so, I, I don't know. Like That kind of bummed me out a, a little bit. But I did like the lead-in, though, how even though they um, – that they had declined, we get to see Sabine again. Exactly. And uh, Mandalorian uh, superior with the jetpacks and the fighting and stuff. I really liked Sabine's people. Oh, I um, love them. <laughs> yeah. And um, I thought it was cute that mom was all like, no, thanks. And then somebody finally said something just like, Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Easily persuaded. <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess we'll go. <laughs> it's like going to the mall. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I mean, we might as well. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll do that. I thought that was I, really neat though. 
Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I had a bit of a complaint myself. Mm -hmm. Is they're always changing how powerful a lightsaber can be. And now Kanan, as this isn't the first time he's done it, but he took a lightsaber all through an entire leg. I noticed that. Put of Luke these walkers to shame. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> right. <laughs> That, that was the super lightsaber going through. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes they have to sit there and, and slowly cut around mm -hmm. in a circle to get a hole for them to go through. But if it's through a big thing, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that was my little complaint I've been uh, having about this season is they keep changing. Oh, yeah. How and then on top of that, Ezra's deflecting TIE fighter blasts and <laughs> things like that. So, yeah. <laughs> they just keep getting more and more powerful. It's oh, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, lightsaber trumps everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's like a, a really messed up uh, rock, paper, scissors. Right. It's, it's, it's kinda, you're never going to yeah. win this one. <laughs> no. It's lightsaber always beats all. Lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I thought it was cool um, with uh, Rex and Zeb, uh, kind uh -huh. of the reminiscent of Clone Wars, them setting up the little traps and everything. I thought that was cool to see Rex back in action with that. Oh, he is so cool. And <laughs> um, I really liked uh, Clone Wars, and I really pulled for the clone troopers, even though they turned out. But, I mean... It's not it really, fault. <laughs> it wasn't their fault, yeah. and you know, but wow. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I wish there had been a lot more to Clone Wars. I hate that it ended how it did, but I mean, I guess it made the way for the Disney acquisition and all that kind of stuff. But right, I'm glad they at least kept the Clone Wars as canon. I, I, canon, I love right. that series so much. Yeah, I think they would have had a. Um, issue if they had to kept it mm -hmm. because that would be a big deal absolutely i mean bigger than even the books i mean the mm -hmm. books are a big deal but people get to see the movies and right. uh, the shows and mm -hmm. kids and yeah anyway i think it would have <laughs> been an even bigger deal yeah so one thing that i i don't know i guess i get, kind of felt was unfair um so after the battle, after they're wrapping up everything and they've gotten um, Agent Callus uh, off of the uh, off of the planet and all that kind of stuff, and they've rescued him, they got him going, and uh, Sabine walks up to Hera, who was like, "Hey, we've got our own fight. Uh, we're gonna need some help." And Hera's like, "No thanks." Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> got to go take care of my people. I'm like, yeah. And Sabine didn't. What is this? <laughs> I know. I thought the same thing. I was. Uh she's always so quick to go in and help whoever mm -hmm. in whatever situation. Mm -hmm. And I love her for that reason. And then somebody really needed her help mm -hmm. and she's just meh. And, and they're in the middle of a civil war. It's not like yeah. Sabine was like, Oh, we're not doing anything. <laughs> it's just like in right. the middle of a civil war, their whole clan, all the clans are at war and everything. And yeah, we'll come take a break and come help you out. And, Hey, we need help with our civil war. No thanks. Nah. <laughs> I thought that was kind of weird, but yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Right. <laughs> I'm washing my hair. <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So, where do you think the series is going from here? I think There's they're a lot going of stuff. to have to um, rebuild a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. and. Um, I think they should go to Mandalore and help them. And I think that'll help their rebellion a lot. Absolutely. And um, I, I have a lot of shoulds. I just don't have a <laughs> a lot of um, what they're actually going to do. I'm more mm -hmm. of, of a just watch it and write it out and see what happens. Type That's gal. cool. Yeah. But um, yeah. So I, I, it took me a couple times to watch it, but I didn't catch it until... The, I think the second or third time I watched the last half of the episode uh, where Rex, it, they're flying off and everything. He's talking to, I can't remember the inventory droid's, droid's name, but him and Chopper, um, they're talking about going to Yavin. Yes. For their, I, I didn't catch that the first time because I, I, 
truth be told, I kind of tune out that droid <laughs> anytime he's talking. He's not exactly my favorite character. <laughs> 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 kind of gets on my nerves. But uh, but when I heard him say Yavin, I was like, oh my gosh! So it, it's we're that much closer to the original trilogy, to the original rebellion um, that we all know and love and everything. Uh, I think that's going to be really cool to see build up. It really is. I'm, I'm, it's ramping up, and I am very excited for it to see where they're going to take it. And, and you know, the executive producer is going to be at Star Wars Celebration. Oh, and you're yes, going. I am so, going. Yay. Yeah, he's going to have a panel for Rebels. And uh, from what I've read for the Rebels panels past, that's where they've always released the big information. That's where they introduced Thrawn. And all the other ones, so I'm really hoping for something really cool. Uh, oh, fun. <laughs> yes, I'm very excited about that. Yes. <laughs> but yeah, I agree with you on the Mandalorians, though, that it definitely they definitely need to utilize that more. Because I feel like that's been a planet that's kind of been to the wayside. Even though they kind of touched on it in Clone Wars, it had its own little arc. The history behind it and the fact that they're all basically natural-born warriors, and that's their code... I mean, right. if they were to go to one side or the other, I mean, as we saw with Gar Saxon, if they go to one side or the other, it's a game changer. Um, yeah. That planet could take down systems, I'm sure. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I think it'd be really cool to see them in action. I do, too. I think that they could really do a lot of good. I did want to say that um, there was a scene, because last episode that we talked mm-hmm. Um, I said, as long as it doesn't go Harry Potter. <laughs> and do you, do you notice the scene where they were shooting the field? Yes. And <laughs> that whole moment, I was like, Harry Potter. <laughs> I've seen that like, movie before. <laughs> I've seen that movie before. I thought it was so funny that it had to be that particular <laughs> reference. <Right>. But yeah. <laughs> Well, I thought that was really funny. I thought it was a little strange because that, that was one thing that I guess I kind of had a complaint with in the episode was that a lot of it seemed so fantastical that it was like, why? Like like, yeah. that, like that scene. Why in the world are there going to be so many Star Destroyers shooting down on this tiny little spot <laughs> all the way up in space, but on this tiny little spot on the planet just pelting it, but the force field holds. It's like... yeah. Okay. The force field holds for a certain amount of time, and then Thrawn, that didn't know about a force field, mm-hmm. knows exactly how long it's going to hold. <laughs> right. Because it's experimental technology. Yeah. He's like, I guys, I just want to rattle the cage. That's it. Just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I just want to yeah. <laughs> tap on the fish tank. <laughs> full, full barrage. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Followed by the face in the sky and all, like it was a whole lot. Like it was really cool visuals and it was a really cool story. It really was. But, it was visually yeah. just out of this world. I just thought like oh, there was a lot of it that was just kind of like you you were borderline about to lose me, but overall I, I really really enjoyed it. I'm really excited for the next season. I am too. Um, did we um get to Fulcrum? No, we very didn't much? talk about Fulcrum. Um. The- I think that did he know what he was getting himself into? Because I know he looked surprised when the signal got jammed and things in mm-hmm. the very beginning. But I don't know. Surely he knew something was up. Well, personally, I think that Callus actually kind of got in a frenzy. He started hearing things that freaked him out, and Thrawn knew that he was hearing the things that freaked him out. And so, gotcha. Yeah, and so okay. Thrawn was technically a step ahead, and that's just what I, I think. And so when he got caught, he may have intended to get caught, but not in that way at that time. No. Yeah, he was definitely <laughs> caught off guard. Um, that was a cool fight scene between them two as well. That was. Really showing Thrawn in action. Um, but yeah, I think that Thrawn at that point was ahead of him, uh, and he didn't expect him to be so far ahead of him. Um, so he kind of underestimated him. I, I only feel that way because at the end of the episode, he, he seems defeated. Like, Callus seems is. like he really escaped a huge ordeal, which he did. He so, did. He yeah. lost everything. Mm-hmm. He lost everything. His status, so, his position, everything. Uh, he yeah. is, he's literally a, a man without a home, and so the rebels have taken him in. And so I, I'm curious as to how or what kind of 
play he'll have in the rebellion. That, that would be interesting exactly. to see. Again, this is Heather from the Whovian perspective. Uh, Heather, where can they find you? Uh, I'm at bodymadlady.com and the GWW Geeks Worldwide at the GWW.com. Sweet. And so she will have uh, Doctor Who episodes, uh, podcasts. She'll have uh, episodes up talking all, all things Doctor Who. Um, she's even got some cool articles up on the GWW. If you haven't checked out that Darth Maul obituary, please, please do. I've read it probably <laughs> 20 times since then, and it's hilarious. I love it. Um, so Thank definitely you. check that out. And she's also on Twitter. Yeah, Who Perspective. W-H-O-V Perspective. Awesome. So definitely give her a follow, guys. Uh, and again, thank you for joining us on the Kessel Run. Um, hopefully we'll be able to continue these Rebels episodes uh, once the season starts back up. And definitely expect a special episode from Star Wars Celebration directly. Um, and hopefully we'll have Heather back here soon. Yay! <laughs> so thank you so much again for joining us. I'm Danny from the SuperpoweredFanCast.com. You can find me on Twitter at SuperpoweredFan, Facebook SuperpoweredFanCast. And you can email me at superpoweredfancast at gmail.com. Uh, and until next time, may the Force be with you.